So this past week, I took on a new IT project challenge and one that is definitely not for the faint of heart, but it is for anyone who is looking to dive into cloud and cloud engineering and hopefully get a job as a cloud engineer. So the Cloud Resume Challenge is a hands-on project designed for aspiring cloud professionals to kind of build real world skills and have an actual resume website that you can build and show to potential employers. It involves using tools like HTML and CSS, JavaScript on the front end, a cloud provider such as AWS or Azure. In my case, I used Azure because that's what I've used the most. Along the way, I cheered, I cried, but mostly I just learned a ton about deploying a full stack web app to Microsoft Azure with CI CD pipelines and infrastructure as code. So in this video, we're gonna walk through the project, kind of talk about how I approach things and what I learned along the way. So on day one, I got set up. I was ready to build this thing, ready to set up my slick new resume website on the cloud, and I immediately cheated, I guess. So being that I'm currently on the job hunt and interviewing for positions, I have a Word doc version in Google Docs of my resume. So I figured why kind of reinvent everything when starting with HTML and CSS. So I found an online converter that converts Word docs to HTML and CSS. And I tried it out and it actually worked out pretty well, better than I thought it would. And so it gave me a good starting point, had the layout, had the CSS in there, and I just kind of used it as a starting point. I had to add a little bit of styling, so like adjusting the, the padding on the top and bottom and adjusting the, the page width so it would kind of constrain my resume down. But overall, it worked pretty well. And there are lots of templates out there you could use as well, but why reinvent the wheel? Just start with a template or try something like a conversion if you already have your resume set up as a Word doc. So then once I had my HTML and CSS all set up, um, I did set up a new GitHub, GitHub repository to store everything to begin with. Um, and then I just deployed that resume to an Azure static storage site. So you just have to set up a storage account in Azure. There's a super easy setting to change it so that you can have a web directory that you can put your static site and it does the hosting for, for static sites. So any simple site that you wanna use with HTML and CSS, you can store and host on Azure through a storage account. So then I had to configure a custom domain. And for this, I knew I wanted to use Cloudflare as my proxy in DNS. Um, I already had my, my main domain set up, zachjabe.com, um, as a domain, but I knew I needed to add a subdomain. So I set up resume.zachjabe.com, um, set up a new Cloudflare account, uh, moved my name servers from GoDaddy to Cloudflare, and then I was able to set up my DNS within Cloudflare. And I knew I wanted to do this because I wanted to enable DNSSEC, which is a more secure, um, basically allows it so that your DNS records can't get poisoned. And I also wanted to enable HTTPS, and I know that Cloudflare is just a great hosting provider. I did initially have some issues with uh, CNAME verification between Azure. Uh, basically, once you set up your static site in Azure, you have to say what your subdomain is, and it has to verify that you own the DNS for your subdomain. And it took some time with the CNAME verification um, between Azure, you kind of have, have, it gives you a URL that you have to put in Cloudflare. Um, but once I got that working and it was resolving, then I was able to access that static site, no problem, from my resume.zachjabe.com. So now we are on to day two, and boy, boy, this day was a doozy. <laughs> this was the day that I really just dug in set up my function app, set up my database, and was trying to get the API calls and things working. And I'll be honest, throughout this whole project, I definitely use ChatGPT a lot. I highly recommend doing that. It can help you with troubleshooting. It's never gonna just give you the answer outright. You're always gonna have to do more digging, maybe ask a question a different way, but it's really the best resource to say, here's my code, here's what things look like, what I'm trying to do, and it will help you, guide you along the way. So I had ChatGPT help me make two functions, one to log the visit when, when a user approaches the website, log their visit so they viewed the web page, and then another one to return the visitor count. So by doing that, you have to reach out to the Cosmos DB database and return that back to the function. So I had to set up the different API calls um, to be able to post the visit count and then retrieve it back from the Cosmos DB database um, and so there were two different functions in my Azure Function app to do that. Had a lot of different issues with getting those things connected correctly. There's a lot of connection string things that you have to you kind of have to troubleshoot and work through. I'll kind of show the project later on, but um, one of the main things was making sure that the connection string for Azure Web, Azure Web Job Storage um, was correct. 
and also making sure that my subdomain was added to this what's called CORS, which I forget what it stands for, but making sure that my subdomain was allowed so that it, it can actually access that function app that is being stored on the static site. And then at the end, I integrated the API with my front end code. Um, I had ChatGPT help me with writing just a little bit of JavaScript to basically do a fetch to, to get that visit count and then um, and log the visit and then paste it and, and show it on the front end. So days three through five really were about two things, organization and automation. Originally, I had two separate GitHub repos that I was using, one for the front end, one for the back end, and that was kind of how the project laid it out, but I decided it would make much more sense to just combine it, combine everything into one private repo for this. And that I knew that, that down the line I could use GitHub Actions and be able to pull from different directories, so I figured this would simplify things. So I had a folder for my front end code, I had a folder for my back end code. Originally, I had one for my infrastructure's code as well. Um, for my ARM templates to be able to deploy uh, the backend infrastructure to Azure. And then I had one for these Cypress smoke tests or Cypress test suite, something like that, that basically allows you to run tests against your code before you deploy it to make sure things are working well. So once I got my folder structure kind of organized and set up, um, I knew that I needed to set up some ARM templates, which are what allows you to automatically deploy resources to the cloud, whether that's Azure, AWS, all of them can, can do these types of things. You can use third party resources like Terraform, but ARM templates are just built into Azure and I figured I would just keep it simple with those. Obviously use, use ChatGPT to help me with those. Um, first, I kind of, exported what my current resources were in Azure because I figured that would be a good starting point because that's everything's already configured in there. So I used that ARM template and then had to tweak things a little bit and kind of found out that I couldn't leave the actual logging of the visit and then the visit count functions in there because Azure doesn't allow you to, when it's in read-only mode, it doesn't allow you to deploy functions through VS Code. It's a lot of, lot of troubleshooting and com complexity there for sure. But once I got each of my pieces, like the infrastructure, the ARM templates, the front-end code, back-end code, then I was ready to start setting up GitHub Actions, which allow you to, when you push to your repository, it does an automation that pushes that code to your resources in Azure. And there's, again, a lot more troubleshooting that goes into that. And originally I had it in three separate steps. So it was kind of the, the back-end infrastructure, the uh, back-end code, the Python code, and then the static site being pushed to the front end. Static site never had an issue because, um, I mean, it's just HTML and CSS, it's pretty simple. You just push from your repository to the uh, correct folder in the Azure storage site. So I was able to get those Cypress tests, Python tests basically, to run manually, but I was never able to get them to be part of the automation. So that's something I might go back and try to tweak and work on later. So with the process of setting up the GitHub Actions, I also had to make sure that I had the secrets configured. You have to configure in your GitHub account, your settings, you have to set up the secrets that you're using to be able to connect to Azure. So you have to set up a service principle within Azure, so a specific account that can access the resources that you're trying to, to deploy to. And then you put that into GitHub Secrets, and that way you can reference it in the code that you deploy to GitHub Actions, and then it's able to get authentication into your account and deploy it to your, to your resources. All right, so I'm just gonna take like five minutes or so and just walk through the project as it stands now, kind of the, the finished result. Um, so I guess we'll start off in VS Code and um, the, probably the simplest where it is placed to start is the front end code because it's really simple. It is just base HTML with my uh, resume details in it. And at the bottom, we've got a little bit of JavaScript that is pulling those, those variables and then displaying them on the page. A little bit of styling um, to match what I had in my Word doc. So that front end code, when we push it um, and run our GitHub action, that is pushed, and actually I'll show that as well. Okay, got our repositories. Stuff. So I can run these workflows manually. So you run this workflow, or if you make a change to the code and you push it, it's gonna start these GitHub actions. And this workflow will start running some point, there we go. That's gonna take a little bit, but nothing has changed. So on the front end, we have a resource group, 
with our static storage account site, whatever you want to call it. And that is configured. Go to the storage browser, go to the web. And this is what has our, and this is an old script. I didn't use this, but this has our HTML and our CSS files and that's it. And then this is being mapped to resume.zachjabe.com. And that shows the resume. Just a really simple way to host a really basic site. And so, yeah, there you go. Our deployment finished, no issues. And it shows you all the different steps that it went through. Logged into Azure, uploaded it to the blob storage and completed the job basically. So that's the simple part. <laughs> the, the front end is simple, very simple. Um, <clears throat> and, and then Cloudflare, Cloudflare is where I'm hosting my DNS and that's what is doing uh, SSL with the HTTPS certificate and all that good stuff. So that's the front end. And now we dive into the more fun things. Um, I guess we'll start with the ARM template. So this is basically just a template that defines all of the resources that I have in my resource group. And I'm specifically doing the function app, the uh, resume visits, Cosmo D DB, Cosmos database. Um, and then there's like a web server, I don't forget exactly what it is, but it goes along with the function app. And it's just basically letting Azure know these are all the settings that should be done. And whenever I deploy it, it just makes sure those settings are the same. If the settings don't change, then nothing is updated. But if they do change, then it updates the backend infrastructure. And so that maps to another resource group that just is for the API. And I have a couple different resources in here. So I have the main thing is the function app. I have the Cosmos DB account. And then there's kind of a storage account that has to be tied to the function app. Um, and the, the, the Cosmos DB, Cosmos database is really simple. All it is is one table that has visitors. And that's what I'm mapping with the function. So updating or getting from that database. So then the function app is where things get interesting. It has two different functions in here that I have in my backend code. One is logging the visit when a, uh, a user first goes on the page, it'll log that visit. Um, it's only unique in that um, if it's a new, like if you open an incognito wind window, <clears throat> so if you open an incognito window and you go to the website, it's gonna log that as a unique visitor. Uh, one thing I was gonna implement but didn't end up getting around to it was kind of doing it based on IP address. Um, that required a lot more and I felt like it was kind of unnecessary just for the learning portion of it. But it does do a unique, like if you stay in the same web browser and you see the site, it's gonna know that it basically uses cookies to, to make sure that, that that visit has already been logged. Um, and then there's another function, visit count, that just goes out to the Cosmos database and pulls back how many visitors in total, how many unique visitors and displays that. So when I run the GitHub action for deploying the backend code, um, which is in, here I'll show you what that looks like. So I have a specific folder that has the front end and back end uh, YAML files that deploy the GitHub actions. This is kind of what the front end one looks like. Um, it's again, it's, it's, it's grabbing those GitHub secrets um, from my account to log into Azure, and then it's uploading from, um, from the source, which is this front end folder to all the code that's in there. And these are, this is kind of how the GitHub Actions um, steps look like. It's a pretty simple um, YAML file. But for backend, we have two different folders, backend and then IAC. So backend is where, my, where that Python code is, the function code, and the IAC infrastructure's code is the ARM templates and the different parameters it needs. Does the same thing, logs into Azure, deploys the ARM template first, so it sets up the resources if they're not already there, and then it takes the function app code and it zips it up and then it deploys it to that function. And so any changes that I make to either of those, ARM template or the backend code, will be reflected when these GitHub actions run. And that is basically it. Oh, I do have these, um, these Cypress tests, which basically just does like a test 
uh, a test reaches out to the API endpoint and make sure that it's getting a response back. So it's pretty. It's a pretty simple test. You can do all kinds of things. So it's definitely a simple test. You can do a lot more with this, but I just wanted. I've never done these kinds of kind of smoke test as they called it before. So I just wanted to give this a try. And this I'm just running manually, but you could implement it into your your um, your GitHub action. So it'll run those and then it'll run the other code. But that is basically it. And so for the, the front end piece, so at the bottom, the JavaScript just displays how many unique visitors have visited the site and it will update um, if we do a new window. I think it will. Yeah, see, so it, it's not truly unique if you open a new browser, browser tab, but just something I could add in the future. So what did I learn? I would say a whole hell of a lot um, between function apps, databases, JavaScript, backend code in Python, deploying from VS Code to Azure, which I'd never really done before, connecting my Azure account in VS Code, and then really all the awesome automation that comes along with GitHub Actions. It was, it was a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff at once. And it was, definitely a, it was definitely a challenge and it was frustrating at times, but overall I had a really fun time working on it and building everything. And I even did a couple different LinkedIn posts as I was um, building everything, which was cool. So that's really it. Let me know in the comments down below if you've taken this challenge or if you plan to in the future. And if you have any questions as you're doing it, I'll be happy to help out as much as I can. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. It helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.